All right, I am here with Bill Nye, the Executive Director of the Planetary Society, or more formally, as we all know him, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, thank you so much for being here. It's such, so good to be here. We bow in your presence. Oh, no, it is I. No, no, no get out of here. But honestly, a big, huge fan. Thank you for all that you've done for the scientific community. I think one of the big trends that we've seen this week is the importance of kind of developing these role models, these characters, these kind of figureheads of science. So often we have athletes that are our role models, we have actors that are our role models, and those are good, they're good, great people. Oh, don't get you wrong. Don't get me wrong, we all like these guys, but I think it's great the work that you've done. Uh, tell me why you're here, why come to the USA Science Network? So, uh, I came, I guess, as the science guy to be sure, but I'm now executive director of the Planetary Society, a little organization started by Carl Sagan, and we promote space exploration and we uh, help people get involved in space exploration. What are your thoughts on the recent current events with the, the Obama administration's choices and elections and decisions on the space exploration? What are your thoughts there? Well, we are very supportive of the new administration's space policy. We're very supportive. Now, it has divided the space community in a way that just took me completely, it just very much surprised me. The Constellation program, I'll just tell you, this is the detail, this is a bunch of U.S. politics and all this stuff, but it's important because yeah. NASA is such a big deal in yeah. space exploration. Um, they were going to build these very large rockets, sort of old-fashioned rockets to do a, a new task in an old way, and the thing got very, very expensive, this program. And so finally, with all due, somebody had the guts to cut it, and let's start something new. Furthermore, people lost sight of the idea that the space shuttle program was canceled six years ago. It was canceled in the previous president's administration. People forget that. And so the reason it was canceled is it's expensive. It takes away money for other things you might do. And it, it's gotten old and rickety. That, that The space shuttle system has gotten to be dangerous. So um, you want to do something new and cool. So we're very supportive of that. What are the, some of the aims of the Planetary Society? What are some of the big projects that are going on right oh, now? Oh, excellent question. Thank you. Somebody told you that. Somebody yes, told you. they did. No, anyway, so the Planetary Society, as we say, uh, we, if you want to do something about space, join us. Here is an engineering model of our Light Sail 1 spacecraft. Excuse me. It is a 3-cube or 3-U CubeSat, Cube Satellite. So it's 10 centimeters on a side by 30 centimeters. This, so this is full size. This is not a model. This, this is, is a full, full deal. This is full size. Wow. Yeah. So then uh, in space, we hope next summer, as early as August, we'll get a ride on a US Air Force rocket. These solar panels will deploy. And then if you want to hold that right there, these four enormous solar sails will come out in space. Now, the solar sails, all four of them, this isn't even full size, fit in these little cavities, these four spaces here. There are electronics up here, so it's an engineering model. You can see these little thin webs and all this stuff. This is to make sure everything fits, and it does. And so, anyway, this is so thin and lightweight. How yes. thin and lightweight How is thin it? and lightweight is or this, low mass, <laughs> That it will be pushed through space by photons. And you would say, hold it, light has no mass. How can it possibly have momentum? How could it possibly impart momentum to a spacecraft? These are excellent questions. Why, thank you very much, I yeah. guess. But it turns out, as a consequence of relativity, sure. light has momentum. And indeed, the Messenger spacecraft, which is this uh, mission that's exploring Mercury, the planet Mercury, is now using the solar pressure, or solar momentum, to control its speed. And the guy told me, oh, this is an anecdote, this is hearsay, as we say in court. He said they've gotten five extra orbits. And Mercury, uh, uh, this mission to Mercury, the messenger, is this huge, uh, long ellipse, thin ellipse. They've gotten five extra orbits by using the sunlight. Furthermore, the, earlier this summer, Japanese aerospace ask, yeah. exploration agency got the first solar sail to work in space. So that's cool, but ours will be the first one to orbit the Earth. And it's entirely funded by people who have an interest. This is personal funding. Individuals from around the world who are members of the Planetary Society, and I guess a few contributors who aren't members, I don't know who those are, gave us enough money to build this thing. Something like this costs, to really get it flying, costs about a million dollars. Not 20 million, not 450 million. A million bucks, which in space exploration, ah. Pocket change. The way, well, it's, 
in sort of order of magnitude, it's 20 sport utility vehicles. Yeah, that's okay. good. That's a great message. It's not a million sport utility vehicles. It's 20. So where can regular folks go to learn more? Get, Planetary.org. You're, you're just hitting me with and all the right softballs, things. Softballs, Bill. We're just yes, throwing you softballs. It's just underhand. All right, so anything else on this? Well, it's cool. This, it this is absolutely is possible fantastic. For a couple things, a couple reasons. NASA has, for several years, had this thing called the CubeSat program, cubicle satellite program, which students and universities build these little things and fly their own missions. But what's happening is the electronics have become so compact, and especially the software. I'm a mechanical engineer. I worked in this business a little bit for many years, in airplanes especially, for many years. The guys only had to write about 500 lines of code. And I'll tell you, some, a spacecraft that does this much can steer itself, point to the sun, do all these cool things. You'd expect, I would expect around half a million lines of sure. fiber. But the reason is the software modules that you can buy are so well tested and robust and good. It's open source yeah. kind of stuff yeah. that you can trust it. It's very cool. What's happening to the big satellite communication corporations, they're really looking at these small scale satellites because they're so capable now. And you can have a string of them, or what we call a constellation of sure. them, and accomplish for a fraction of the cost of a traditional mission the same stuff. And if, if the mission is, is the right one, it'll have built-in redundancy. It'll yeah. be a more robust. You have better chance of success. Yeah, network of satellites.